Hello, this is the second video of highlights from Yumeji Modern, and this roughly corresponds to the content from chapters 3 to 5 in my book. For an introduction to Takehisa Yumeji and his larger significance, please go to the first video. The medium in which Takehisa Yumeji was most engaged, graphic arts and reproducible arts, was firmly grounded in popular culture and in the mainstream artistic spheres through his influence on other artists. During the early 20th century, there was no clear distinction between the audiences for emerging concepts of fine arts and graphic works appearing in mass media. This intersection of official academy art and reproducible art in the mediascape is precisely what enabled Yumeji to nurture his art practice. And this intersection is an aspect of modernism within the wider context. Elements such as the emphasis on self, the immediacy and closeness between work and audience, or artist and audience, the focus on medium as a means of self-expression, and the absence of any distinction between life and art embody the social changes that define modernism. Yumeji's involvement in mass media and commercial spheres placed him outside the newly established circles of the art academy and the realm of fine arts. Yumeji instead fashioned his alternate space as an outlier. Young artists saw Yumeji as a mentoring figure and convened in his studio above the Minotoya shop, as you see in this photograph here, which they called the Yumeji Gakko or Yumeji School. Among such artists, the most prominent were Onchi Koshiro, Tanaka Kyokichi, and Fujimori Shizuo, three aspiring artists who went on to form the art and literary group Tsukuhae, meaning Reflections of the Moon. Yumeji's eclectic artistic interests particularly influenced these artists. These younger artists were also eager to explore different avenues of artistic expression, including contemporary Western styles associated with the avant-garde, such as Cubism, Futurism, and Expressionism, which also impacted Yumeji's own work, as you can see in the two works here by Onchi and Yumeji himself. Yumeji's success in publishing his own collection of works and his engagement with graphic works in mass media encouraged these Tsukuhaya artists to espouse the woodcut as their creative medium and was key in securing an outlet for the publication of their coterie magazine, also called the Tsukuhaya. My final highlight for this video and the focus of the final chapter revisits the artist Yumeji as a contradictory figure, not only in terms of the eclectic and at times disparate influences that coexist in his heart practice, but also in his subject matter and political stance. All of these elements culminate together in his Tokyo Sainan Gashin, or Sketches of the Tokyo Disaster, released merely 13 days following the Great Kanto Earthquake of 1923. This series with 21 issues demonstrates Yumeji's camaraderie with his fellow Tokyoites and the struggles that survivors faced as the city, region, and nation attempted to come to terms with the recovery from the event. As tempting as it is to focus on the disaster and suffering, in this video, I would like to introduce one issue that focuses on a moment of serenity, beauty, and humanity amidst the chaos and wreckage. This is the 12th issue from September 25, called Chushu no Megetsu, or Moon Viewing. It is a tranquil night scene with a mother and her two children, seen from behind, sitting in a field and looking up at the moon. It is a poignant scene and all the more so, as we might even imagine the woman with Yumeji's sensitive portrayal of his iconic Yumeji-style beauty. 
The romanticized natural setting and the figures communicate a beautiful moment, even within a series that dwells on the theme of destruction. The text recounts how people had to spend many nights in the open due to lack of shelter and describes, I saw a woman pulling pampas grass in the field at Aoyama. I passed by casually, then realized that tonight was moon viewing. Some do not forget the offerings to the full moon, even in such destitute times when people are living in shacks. Tonight, there must be people gazing at the bright moon from the eaves of the galvanized iron roofs, grateful for their survival. Moon viewing festivities celebrated the beauty of the autumnal moon and prayed for an abundant harvest. The appreciation of Mother Nature, which had just struck against humanity, is breathtaking. By homing in on the attempts of one woman to preserve the tradition of moon viewing for her children despite the tragedy, the image and text also reflect Yumiji's focus on the experience of the individual in the face of a cataclysmic natural disaster. The desire for people to recreate and preserve normalcy even during a time of trauma touched Yumeji. His sense of compassion and close observation of the day-to-day -day activities of ordinary women, men, and children is a common thread that had already surfaced early in his career in his socialist illustrations. In essence, this approach likewise informed his female figures, giving voice to the voiceless in society by refocusing people's attention away from the government officials and the restoration policies after the earthquake. Yumeji's graphic work and his engagement with mass media provide a lens into the complexity of the media environment of modern Japan. An understanding of his legacy and his role within the mediascape of the early 20th century contributes to how we view a widely circulating media outlet that links with the multiple modes of communication and viewing experience. These conditions coalesced in the early 20th century, thereby setting the stage for Yumiji as he forged a path that integrated his ideas on life and art. Thank you so much for listening to these videos. If you'd like to learn more, please go ahead and read my book. Thank you.